Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ring Ready Live, the home of the owner handler brought to you by ShowSite Magazine. I'm Dan Sayers with ShowSite here with Lee Whittier, the dog show mentor. Lee, you and I are cutting it up. <laughs> right before, I can tell everyone that right before we started today, we were talking about focus, how to get focus, how to keep your focus, how much focus is too much focus. And then we just ended up <laughs> talking about how unfocused we are today. So nevertheless, here we are. We're so happy to be here with you. And as always, let us know who you are, where you're from. Let us know your breed and let us know what you do to keep focus, both before getting in the ring, while you're in the ring, and maybe during the week between shows. So anyway, Lee, are you any better focused than you were a few minutes ago? I am laser focused. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, today... Today's topic is perfect for for today. I think you know, getting getting your focus can be difficult at times, and um, sometimes I find that I'm um, wondering and worrying instead of winning when I show my dogs, and that's because maybe I'm not as focused as I could be, or maybe I'm too focused. Um, well, that that would be interesting to ask people. Is um, so what keeps you from being focused in the ring? So say hello to us in the chat and help us out here and tell us what what keeps you from focusing on your dog and the task at hand in the ring. If may I start the discussion while we're <laughs> waiting for I'm I told you I'm laser focused, Dan. <laughs> well, you know, I often say this thing, let us know if you're distracted and unable to focus because of your smartphone. I find that every time that I am reaching for my smartphone to do a task, I lose that focus because I'm distracted by all of the other things that are appearing on my screen. I think that a smartphone, for me anyway, is a metaphor for showing dogs because I get my dog ready throughout the week, ring ready, you know, the day before, the morning of, when we get to the show site, so everything is focused. And then somehow between the setup and the ring, um, my focus is gone. Maybe I'm saying hello to someone, or maybe my dog decides to, you know, act the fool. Um, and then all of a sudden they're calling my class and somebody, Dan, Dan, get in the ring. And you think, <laughs> I should be able to do this by now. But uh, it's really, you know, sometimes staying focused is simply impossible because of, of distractions. Uh, Sarah, hello. Uh, I don't know if you see Sarah has beagles in Washington State, up where you are, Lee. And um, she says that sometimes it can be intimidating who she's in the ring with. So maybe you can talk about Sarah's comment. That's really interesting, isn't it? You're in the ring. And you're in the ring with your your you know your role models or a professional or somebody that intimidates you. What? How do you stay focused in that in that case? Well, Lee? that's really exciting because that starts way before you even get mm -hmm. to the ring. That is so. Um, uh, one of my my members said to me, "Oh, the number one dog in the country is going to be there," and I said, "Yes, excellent, an opportunity for competition." Uh, that person that's number one has to worry about you knocking them off. Mm. Like, wow, is that cool? <laughs> so that's great. Get, get in there, start thinking about that ahead of time. Like, so what do you really think about? You know, what what is your focus? Where is your dog? What's going on with the judge? And really just send your sensors out for what you're going to be doing when you when you meet that number one dog in the country in the ring. Yeah, just, you know, changing your mindset, being excited about being in the ring with the number one dog in the country. Competition. A, <laughs> Yay. <laughs> the best of competitions, no doubt. And ima imagine how, if I had that mindset, how I could come out of that ring, win, lose, or draw with 
having perfected, maybe stepped up my game a little bit because the competition was at this level. And maybe I rose a little bit closer to that level myself because of it. But even more so, Dan, is you have made that person raise their own bar wow. just by your raising yours. Think right. about that, everyone. Could you repeat that, Lee? That's really key. Yeah, absolutely. So you, by you upping your game, you're forcing that person to up their game. So, so it's it's yeah. a, it's a system, and I wrote an article about this early on in Show Site, so folks might want to check that one out. Yes, we're all like ships in a harbor, aren't we? And <laughs> you know, the tide raises, and we all kind of raise a little bit. It's a wonderful thing about our sport is is rather than viewing the competition as uh, preventing our, us succeeding and focusing, we can actually succeed and focus along with everybody else. That's a, a wonderful example. Karen says that um, she's often losing her focus because people want to talk to her and she doesn't want to seem rude. That's really a good one, Karen. It, it is a behavior that, that I understand. Um, Lee, how do you stay focused and not come off as being rude? That's a challenge. So, yeah, so if you're in your grooming area, just put in your, put in your ear pods, right? Your air pods um, and pretend that you're listening to music or maybe you are listening to something motivational. If you're a Dog Show Mentor member, you might be streaming uh, some of our webinars and masterclasses from Dog Show Mentor. But um, if you're by the ring, um, choose a spot. And if you have, for example, for me, I have a, um, a smaller dog. I might kneel down with my dog so that I'm not in in the range of people speaking. They have to shout down to me or kneel, right? Um, if you have a larger dog, there are ways to turn your back, literally, um, that aren't rude. And so uh, try a few ways that, that you would find work for you and that you feel comfortable with. I find in that case, uh, Karen, that sometimes just saying, oh, I'm getting ready to go in the ring in 20 minutes or at 135 or something like that sort of says without saying it, hey, I'm busy. You know, I'm getting my dog ready um, and I'd love to talk to you afterwards. You know, come back at two o'clock. I should be back at the setup. And then, of course, you're going to be more relaxed. You're going to, you know, hopefully have some ribbons to share with your friends and uh, you'll be able to be more focused. And just a moment ago, you mentioned Dog Show Mentor members have access to a lot of teaching tools that they can listen to. And, you know, I'm thinking of the Olympic athletes. You often see them before they run or before they skate. They're listening to something motivational. I don't know if it's a song, if it's a mantra. It, it, it may be Dog Show Mentor, Lee. Who knows? It may be Lee Woody. Yeah, I mean, we, we have the app, so... <laughs> That's right. But, be, but finding your focus through an app, you know, that's kind of an amazing thing that we have at our fingertips, it is, isn't it? it? And you offer that on uh, many, in many formats and in many ways through the Dog Show Mentor program. And maybe now's a good time to remind everyone about Dog Show Mentor and how they can uh, find Lee Whittier. Yeah, just... Uh... You can private message me on Messenger. You can go to dogshowmentor.com. You can um, put in the chat here that um, you want to speak with me. And I'm I'm available a lot of the time, busy a lot of the time, but I always like to make time for you. Thank you, Lee. I know you always make time for me and always time for Ring Ready Live, and I know that you do the same for your members and, and for anyone who is uh, looking to become a member of Dog Show Mentor. So thank you for that plug. Let me ask you, Lee, about focus and when does being focused become detrimental to the extent that maybe you are, you're too focused on, let's say you're too focused on your dog and you've completely lost focus in the judge in the ring setup, maybe where that ramp is as you're running around focused on your dog. I mean, how do you stay focused without being tunnel visioned 
and headed for a disaster. Yeah, I mean, it, there's definitely a system. Uh, you develop a system for maintaining focus on your dog and having that peripheral vision. And that's a practice. That's a practice. I mean, it's like a meditation for people, right? So you have to practice having that that um, peripheral vision where you can see everything. And you know, things that we talk about things that we've seen. Like, well, I've seen people run into the ring gates on their on their right side because they're so focused on their dog and they push themselves out to the ring gates. Uh, uh, as you as you pointed out earlier, sometimes people run into the tent stakes, um, mm. which is why they're covered and they have red flags on them and people still uh, can fall into them. Um, falling over uh, matting in a building, that can be uh, something that people do because they aren't paying attention really. And then, and it's, they're not, they're paying attention to their dog, but they're not paying attention to other things at the same time. And that is, it's a learned skill. And so you just practice it. And I would encourage everyone, when you have time at a show, find a breed where there is a large entry, find that entry where there are quality handled dogs. Just sit down and watch the, the, watch the dance that goes on in the ring. Watch how these exhibitors are focused sort of everywhere on the judge, on their dog, on their footing, on yes on where that table is you know now tables and ramps they come and go in and out of the ring you know if you're not paying attention yeah. a ramp can appear in a place where a moment ago it wasn't and so there, there's a and, lot to focus on isn't there yeah i see um alex um posted the article uh show site article on mindset and olympians um in the chat so if you want to read what i wrote about that um, it's there. Thank you, Alex. And uh, yeah, Regeshwar says um, she couldn't visit with friends at in Palm Springs and she felt badly. And yeah, sometimes I feel badly too if I say to somebody, oh, can, can, can you come back after judging? And then they don't come back and I think, oh, I hurt their feelings. But, um, you know, the truth is that as long as we're kind, uh, mm. we can't necessarily be responsible for someone else's reaction. So if you've been nice and said, oh, please come back later to someone who's trying to pet, pet your, your Tibetan Terry right before you go in the ring. Um, <laughs> and if they don't come back, then they, you know, they don't come back. You can't help yeah. that as long as you were nice. Yeah. Right. And isn't kindness a tenet of Dog Show Mentor Program? It is. It absolutely is. Yes. Kindness can go a very long way in not only, um, well, not only, I'm not sure how kindness relates to staying focused, but I think kindness certainly leaves everyone, as you just said in that example, with, uh, with, um, just a good feeling even if well even if okay so kindness goes goes more than more than just a good feeling and the reason that um i originally chose that as part of dog show mentor is because it keeps you as part of a system and so the dog show is a system and so how does kindness help you win more in the ring well when you're kind and, to someone and you help them and you help them by speaking to them, you help them maybe with their dog, with their grooming, whatever, um, opening a door for someone. And then later on, you may need some help, then you may have an opportunity that you didn't have before. It also can, as you are kind to others, they it, it respond in, in, in kind mm -hmm. and may show you something um, that you may, if they have more experience, they may show you something about grooming or they may sh show you something about training that you didn't know before. And suddenly you have friends and allies and you make it part of how you interact at dog shows. And I feel that that's really important. So, yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you for that sidebar. Uh, a sidebar will focus. <laughs> 
<laughs> focus on being kind. I, I have to say that I, I do see that at every show that I that I attend. Somebody is is lending you a, a poop bag. Somebody is holding the door right. for you. Somebody is, you know, scooching their table so that you can squeeze into the grooming area. There really are people who are being yeah. kind at every show. And that helps us to focus on what we are there to do. Um, so um, one thing that, that I uh, has happened to me, Lee, is I've been in the ring, indoors, <clears throat> focused on everything, everything's going well. And then there's that voice overhead, you know, the loudspeaker, that big loud voice, that booming voice. And you can see uh, the all of a sudden focus sort of goes out the window, either on the dog's part or on the handler's part. That happened to me last year, one day of a cluster. I went back the next day, obviously, went to our ring, waiting to go in. And one of my fellow exhibitors said, oh, I'm so sorry about what happened yesterday. And I said, well, what happened yesterday? And she said, oh, the loudspeaker. It just happened as the judge was coming up to my dog. The interesting thing when she called that out is that I didn't even realize that that had happened. And her acknowledging that for me made me realize, oh, my dog and I were focused. That that didn't even become an issue. And what I realized is that it was my competitor who had lost focus. <laughs> um, that, was, that was a real eye opener for me. So if you have been in the ring or at a show and that voice comes over a loudspeaker, have you lost focus? Has, has your dog lost focus? Or were you able to not even respond, not even react? Or, yeah, and not not hear it. I mean, it's so, it. um, uh, so typical when you're really focused and really doing your job in the ring, really supporting your dog and, and creating this amazing presentation, um, you will have the opportunity to go around the ring and have everyone cheering and screaming and clapping and you don't hear any of it. It just falls away. That's yes. focus. I and your dog that. doesn't either because he's focused too. That's he's right. like, yeah, baby, we're going. I often ask judges, you know, who were judging a group at the garden, for example, you know, how was it? How, how did it feel to hear all of that cheering? And they often say, I didn't hear it. And I've been on that floor. It's very loud. And the dogs don't seem to hear it either. You know, <laughs> these, these little toy dogs just seem as, as focused on the energy and the moment with their handler that all of that is just, it's just not even happening. I mean, if that's not focused, I, I don't really know what is. And, uh, I mean, you're you're a multi-group judge, Lee. I imagine that you've had th those moments where you are so focused on this dog that's in front of you, and and it's just a moment where hopefully there's nothing else happening other than the focus of you maybe falling in love with with that dog. Does that happen for you as a judge? Absolutely, um, and it doesn't matter if it's if it's a deafening crowd or Mm. one 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 hand clapping it's you are you are focused on the dog and you don't hear what's going on people say to me oh does 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 clapping influence you as a judge uh yeah mm. no <laughs> <laughs> Hard to... yeah it, it when when there's when there's no one when it's dead silence you're like um here <laughs> so what but you know yeah. Really, where all this, well, where, where this all came from, and I hope you'll all start uh, posting in the chat more, is what are your action items that you use mm. to stay focused? So if, if you don't want to share what's kept you from being focused, share with us what are your action items that help keep you focused as an exhibitor? What are your action items that keep you focused as an exhibitor what do you do from the time you leave home until the time you pick up your best in show ribbon what what are the action items that help you stay focused 
So for me, um, I like to have rituals. And I'm not going to tell you what my rituals are, but I will tell you, I have developed rituals of things that I do, the, the specific things that I do and the way that I do them. So it's a specific action done in a specific way. And that helps me stay focused. It's a, it's a, um, an, uh, an level of organization mm -hmm. that is, um, exceptionally created just for this purpose. So what is your action item? So Linda says she uses a checklist. Absolutely. Checklists are so valuable. And hey, Julie, welcome from Arizona. Having a checklist speaks to your comment about organization. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly checklists help us to stay organized. Rageshwar has something similarly she says she has a packing checklist and a separate day of show checklist uh-huh that's exactly. great she yeah. also uses music and brushing out her dog's beard while waiting yes uh, yeah a routine yeah routine is is um is very is very similar i would say yeah for me lee i get up early I love getting up without that feeling of being rushed, having my coffee, even on a day when it's 8 a.m. in the ring time. You know, I may get up at 3 or 3.30 just because what helps me to get focused is to just not be hurried. I don't know if that works for everyone or anyone, but um, it's certainly... But even so if you are in a hurry and you are pressed for time... Mm -hmm acting in an unhurried way and still being able to uh, do the same tasks, but not in a hurried way. If you can do them unhurried, but focused, then you'll still get the job done and be grounded when you get to the ring. That's something we don't talk about a lot. Maybe I should write an article about how to stay grounded. What do you I think, see, Dan? Yes, I think that's great. And as you're talking, Lee, I'm thinking that this is probably something that the dog show mentor teaches. Uh, because, <laughs> because although I like to get up at 3 or 3.30, I don't always do that. So you're right. If I had those skills that I could still maintain the calm, despite the fact that I don't have all the time in the world, <laughs> um, that's certainly going to help me to stay focused and certainly help my, my dog and I in the ring. Uh, Ray is back. And hi, Ray. He says that he was in the inner handler group two weeks ago with some electric hang gliders overhead and his Basenji got had totally lost focus. I wonder why, Ray. Uh, but he got his attention back and he apologized to the judge and he cracked a joke to the judge that he saw the pterodactyl. I love that. Well done, Ray. Well done. Yeah, boy, humor is a great uh, leveler and a great, uh, great way to to stay focused and to just keep keep from getting too serious about losing our focus. Uh, and your Basenji still managed to get an owner hand. <laughs> Congratulations. That's a great story. Um, I, I think- I how Becky's, Becky, yes, exactly. Acting unhurried is beneficial to your dog too. Uh, that's exactly right. Um, they should not be on, on the end of your uh, craziness to get things done in in a specific amount of time. But I would like to get to the word of the day. Let's do it. What's the word, Lee? Well, here we go, everyone. If you're ready to play, you know that we have a new game that we started this year. It's called What's the Word? Today, we have just one word because Lee and I feel that this is a word and a definition that deserves a little bit more conversation since it's something that we all seem to uh to talk about these days so here is the definition you tell us the word elongated tubular neck lacking in strength and arch or crest of neck i'll say that again the elongated tubular neck lacking in strength and arch or crest of neck so think about what that looks like Okay, we got the timer going. 
And one more time. <gasps> Whoa, Sandy. Sandy, congratulations. Nice job. That's wonderful. We are impressed, Sandy. And if I remember correctly, Sandy, you've been pretty good at this game uh, in, in recent weeks. So you are certainly pulling into the lead. Everyone, Sandy has it right. A stovepipe neck is an elongated tubular neck that lacks strength, an arch, or a crest of neck. And Lee, let's, if you don't mind as a, as a judge, tell us uh, in so many words what a stovepipe stovepipe neck looks like how can we identify one when we right. see it yeah so um if you are looking at the silhouette of a dog and it's one straight line from the tip of its ears to the tip of its toes and there's a right angle where uh the neck should should be um nice, easy neck into shoulders, then you know you're looking at a stovepipe neck. And it once you, now that, now that we've talked about it, I hope that you will go buy rings and you will start looking at these beautiful dogs that are shown beautifully. And they've got this column front, I call it a column front, column front and sweeping rear. And you're like, uh, no, that's not right. It's, it can be impressive. Uh, there are many dogs, particularly um, dogs that are not coated, who can carry this off because they have this, it, it's sort of an elegant look, right? But it's totally wrong and not functional. So there you have it. Yes. And once you, uh, right. you don't have, exactly. You you don't have to be long at a dog show before you start to recognize that an awful lot of dogs are crossbreeds. Uh, seem to have this uh, this conformational fault. And uh, coated breeds are often groomed in such a way that it's hidden. You as a Judge Lee, you certainly get your hands on a dog and you find where you think there's layback of shoulder. It's really just a pile of hair. That's and, right. You know, and, and your breed has that, um, I'm pretty sure. And um, Sandy says she's seen it in Dobermans. There's a lot of Dobermans. There's uh, Basenjis. Um, Kathy has a um, a link here. I'm not sure what it's to. It's Illustrated Standard from Canada. Uh, but I don't know what that is. Um, but thank you for it. And I will look at it later. Yes, Sandy, let us know. Um, I have just, there's going to be an article in show site in, later in the February issue on the giant schnauzer. And it is a really in-depth analysis of that breed standard. And it really talks uh, quite a, quite um, clearly, if you will, about the four quarters and the front assembly. And I thought that it really spoke to what is correct, what is, what is not a stovepipe neck. In other words, how that front assembly uh, really impacts the neck into shoulder transition and ultimately it affects the dog's ability to perform so although we may see these dogs in the ringley that have a stovepipe neck that that uh sorry what do you call that front uh, um column column front with that sweeping rear it's very stylish you know <laughs> it, there's no doubt that it's stylish but boy <laughs> that dog is really not going to be able to move around the ring, much less being able to do its job. And in the case of a giant schnauzer, that job requires it to trot all day, as, as does the Rottweiler and so many other drover type breeds. And so, um, so when you see that neck in the ring, you're gonna realize that it's, well, it's the description that refers to the neck, but you're seeing that neck because of how the front is poorly made essentially. Yeah. And, um, and it is something that I know Lee, many judges are finding in their rings across many breeds. I know that as a breeder, it's something that can be um, easy to lose and difficult to get back. Um, it's yeah. certainly something that as a breeder, I make a priority. Um, they've either got it at eight weeks or they don't, you know, that's not, <laughs> that's not something that's going to get any better is, is what I've come to understand. Um, 
But if you've got that issue in your breed, let us know. Uh, Kathy, thank you for sharing that link. Um, the link that yeah. Kathy has shared shows an illustration of different types of neck, including a stovepipe neck. Thank you, Kathy. Lee, this is why I love our community here at Ring Ready Live is all of us are so knowledgeable and so able to share that knowledge with one another. You're the dog show mentor and I'm the host, but among all of our family here at Ring Ready Live, we've got a wealth of resources. Well, on and, and I'd like to point out here that um, Sandy is uh, single-handedly raising the bar on, on what terms we bring because we keep creating harder and harder terms and she keeps getting them so um so we're well, gonna have to start a leaderboard for who wins what we are there. <laughs> sandy but i will say keep up the good work and lee if you notice sandy had commented that she reads a lot of standards yeah i, I did mean, see that yeah yeah it, it shows sandy so i i encourage all of you to follow sandy's example read those standards. Um, they are there to inform us, to help us uh, understand the breeds. And and what a great way to stay focused. You know, if you're at a dog show and you've got time to kill, pull out that phone. And rather than be distracted by everything that's going to distract you on your smartphone, <laughs> go to the AKC website or go to the Parent Club website, pull up the breed standard and sit there and, and read it. If there's a breed that you don't know too much about, Go ringside. Watch Lee Whittier judge a breed the next time that you're at a show where she's on the panel. Pull up that breed standard and read it. See if you understand yeah. what's going on. Or, or uh, you know, offer the club to Stuart in my ring. I would love to have you, Stuart, for me. So um, please, um, you know, get in touch with the chief steward of a club if you see me coming up. And, um, and Stuart, that'd be lovely. Well, you've heard it from Lee Whittier, the dog show mentor. You can reach her online. You can reach her um, at her uh, uh, Facebook uh, family. Messenger. Can you give, can you give us that again? Yeah, um, dog show mentor owner handlers is the name of the Facebook group. Dog show mentor owner handlers, and just answer a couple of questions so I know I get an idea about um, you know what what you would like to get out of the group and um it'll pop you right in there and that'll be fun well if you haven't done so already reach out to lee that way be sure to reach out to megan your customer relationship manager she's available at megan at showsitemagazine.com she'd love to hear from you about celebrating your dog's wins and i believe it is the herding group that is going to be featured in the march issue so if yours is a herding breed uh, be sure to reach out to Megan and let her know what your plans are. And uh, we want to thank you for joining us here today to discuss keeping focus in the ring and how to stay focused. And I want to thank you, Lee, for your suggestions. And I want to thank everyone who's joined us today for offering their suggestions for staying and keeping focus. And I want to thank everyone who shared a, their personal story about being focused in the ring um ray was a very good example and his example was very fun and entertaining pterodactyl <laughs> so, yeah i don't think i don't think i'm ever going to look at a hang glider or a kite in the same way again uh and neither is your basenji ray but anyway thank you all for being here remember that uh, we are here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 noon Pacific. Lee is the dog show mentor. I'm Dan Sayers with Showsite. And remember to, um, well, remember to stay focused and, yeah. <laughs> and have fun with your dogs. Yeah, and make sure your dog has fun with you. And I'll see you in the winner's circle. Bye, everybody. Bye, Lee, and bye, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn says, Lee, that she uses the illustrated standards. Uh, and the giant schnauzer one is very good, as is the Bouvier. <clears throat> and, of course, the Irish water spaniel is king of all illustrated standards. Yeah, that's so kind of you, Lee. Yes, you know, everyone should, should uh, if there's a breed that, that interests you, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. A little it's right on my desk. The water spaniel <laughs> illustrated standard. Um, yes, I have the Bouvier, the giant. In fact, I try to get 
all of the illustrated standards because yes, they can really, they can sort of answer some of the questions that maybe are not Absolutely. Um, answered by the standards themselves. And I think that that's why they can be so useful. They don't replace the standard, but they often clarify it in ways they, that are- Well, they, yeah, they quote the standard and then explain it how they, how they, well, okay. So from my perspective, most illustrated standards explain the standard so that you'll judge it in a different way other than how you might want to read the standard. Ah, uh, well, that's, there's a show topic right there. <laughs> how to use an illustrated standard. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I just got done saying I have, you know, so many illustrated standards, but I'm not sure that I ever quite thought of them as you like just Like that? Mm -hmm. but, Right, well, mm. you have it, folks. The dog show mentor has spoken. <laughs> I told you, unleashed. <laughs> unleashed, yes. Lee, unleashed. Why don't we have that as a running feature in the magazine? I love it. Well, maybe I, will that's have, I will have a, a rant, undoubtedly, a rant. <laughs> I love it.